Hey there guys, we've got news for Global on April 4th, and in this video you've got just me, but I'm going to be going over the news, and I'm also going to be doing a little bit of a side thing where I discuss um, upcoming teams and all that towards the end of the video. But for now, let's go over the actual news we're getting. So we're getting Sophie, and it seems that Global is... Um, you know, we kind of talked about this last week. Uh, you know, people that do the data mining could see from the data what was happening this coming week. And we sort of already knew that they were going to be skipping um, Paladin of Grand Shelt, skipping Roos, skipping Nelica. Um, and here's the confirmation. It's just Sophie for this week. The rest of those units, you know, forget about them. Anyway, so for this week, we've got Sophie, a premium unit. She is a water leader, and basically she's just, uh, what's his name? The Esper of Ruin Rain, but better. You know, I told you guys a few weeks ago when Esper Rain came out, you know, he's a huge trap. Do not pull for him. Hopefully you listened, because Sophie is just strictly better in basically every way. So let's go over uh, the unit and all that. As far as the step up, nothing surprising here. Typical step up, your rate ups are Metsy, Titus, Prompto, and Cecil. Um, Titus definitely shouldn't be here. He's pretty worthless. But, uh, you know, Metsy's a good breaker. Prompto's a good breaker for light element. And then Cecil is, you know, a good tank. That said, there's better these days like Abigail. But he's still fine if you don't have him yet. Uh, so Sophie is getting a upgrade, and it looks like the only upgrade is the leader skill. Same thing as Rain. So it's kind of hilarious. They nerfed Rain's leader skill, and you know there was a whole discussion that we talked about it previously. It was like mathed out, and people proved in the Dark Visions channel that the Rain leader skill is actually worse as as compared to what it would have been versus the JP version. Anyway, now we've got Sophie that just straight up upgrades her original leader skill. So not only was Rain's leader skill nerfed, so Sophie's is even buffed beyond that. So if Rain had any hope whatsoever of being useful, she is the final nail in the coffin. Rain was a huge trap, and hopefully you'd listen to me. Anyway, um, so she's a Brave Shifter, and her damage is, like, okay, not great. It's a little bit low-end, even for Neo Vision standards. Um, and then compared to Neo Pluses, it's obviously way lower. She is not Neo Plus, by the way. She's a regular old Neo Vision unit. And all she really does is a 40% Rod in Peril and a little bit of damage. She doesn't have any kind of killers, utility, nothing like that. But, um, well, I guess you could call her Amplify Utility. So the one thing she does really important is she does AoE 100% Water Amplify. And going forward, this is pretty standard on all, like, the supporter units for your Dark Visions parties. Each element has one unit, sometimes two, I think, but pretty much one unit that has an AoE 100 Amplify, <coughs> which is good for when you start putting a team with multiple Neovisions Pluses that don't have their Amplify. Um, but yeah, she's the 100. And then her leader skill, which was upgraded on Global, is now 1100 in Dark Visions, well, pretty much in everywhere except for Clash. And in Clash, it's 1200. So the same as Rain inside of Clash, but outside of Clash, Rain got nerfed to 900, down from 1000. Sophie got buffed up to 1100 from 1000. In JP, they were both 1000. Um, so yeah, you know, Rain, huge downgrade. Sophie, huge upgrade. Well, huge being 10%, but still 10% are pretty big. Uh, anyhow, I've went ahead and updated my damage spreadsheet for Sophie's new leader skill. You can take a look at that. And we're gonna be going over that more in a little bit when I start talking about teams and all that towards the end of the video. <clears throat> Other than that, her vision card is one of those double element or double typed vision cards. If you're a water and an evocation unit, 
you'll get a thousand attack and magic, which is pretty good. Um, that being said, most units are not going to qualify for both. Uh, most relevant units, like there's some older ones like Dragon Lord Roost that you don't really care about anymore. But uh, Sophie herself, obviously. Um, Chow is another one. That being said, I think Chow's personal card is probably better. I'd have to do the math if this is better or Chow's personal card. You can also put this on stuff like Evoker, the unit Evoker of Final Fantasy III. Not that you ever would, but yeah, for the most part, not many units <coughs> are Water and Evocation. But there's a few, um, and there's her card, yeah. Other than that, you know, like I said, the unit is just a leader and an amplify, and okay-ish damage. So here is the spreadsheet showing Sophie. As you can see, she's pretty far down the list, but, you know, she is the leader, and she does about 916 billion um, <coughs> on a Dark Visions party. So, yeah, and then, of course, you know, comparatively speaking, she'll be even further behind in, uh, in Clash of Wills. But she does have the Amplify. So yeah, there's the unit. Is she worth pulling for? We're going to be going over that a lot more in the end of the video when I start talking about um, team building. Anyway, let's move along. So we are getting the farming event for this event. <coughs> this is, um, uh, what's it called? This is like a box event where you farm Mog King, whatever you want to call it, treasure summons, that kind of stuff. Not heard or summons, uh, box summons. Um, but it looks like we are slowly moving towards the JP method where you have to spend more time farming it. If you listened to the um, like the podcast video I did about JP about a week ago, <coughs> I explained and we, we, we talked about the way these farming events get significantly longer. Um, 350,000 for your new points. Currently, the normal points are 150,000 for the final relevant rewards. There's like, you know, some free tickets, not tickets, free currency beyond 150, but you, you stop at 150. Well, now it goes to 350,000, which is more than doubled, which is, I guess, not the biggest deal. Um, so for me personally, it takes... Uh, on, you know, day one, I, I, I usually use, like, um, stamina potions and knock out the farming event on day one. So, from the time I start the farming until finished using, you know, 10 runs auto-repeat, it takes something like 20 to 30 minutes to, to knock out the 150,000. So, 350,000, it's going to take something like an hour of just straight farming. That being said, most of it is auto-farming, but it is still irritating because every Every like five or ten minutes, you got to go and you know set up ten more repeats. Uh, so it does take time. It is tedious, but there it is. That's how it is in JP. Actually, JP it's even worse. It gets it gets worse than this later on. But uh, yeah, they slowly get it worse and worse and worse. And I was hoping Global wouldn't do that, but I guess they're following along. Sad face. Anyway, um, yeah, you know, farm the event. There you go. Uh, oh, hmm. It looks like they're giving a blessing the crystal. Okay, so this is going to be the first free EX materia that Global gets. Um, that being said, blessing of the crystal. So you still can't use this on Tifa. Kind of hilarious. <laughs> this would only be useful on either. Well, it's attack power only. You can't, you can't even use it on Sophie. You can't use it on Dark Fina. Um, this would, or, or Zyrus, so that would only be for Last Well. So if you got Last Well, the Neo Business Plus Last Well from a few weeks ago, uh, and you don't have EX3 yet, <clears throat> well, now you have something for him. And this is a little frustrating because uh, they're taking away, it looks like. So here's the event from the JP server. It looks like they're taking away the Breaker of Laws stage. This is the one where you get um, this materia. It's a materia. An EX materia, you fight Chaos Bismarck, and you get it, you know, four stages, etc. Um, you know, a little bit of lapis from all that. And we're not getting that one for whatever reason. Global seems to be skipping more content. Something else we're skipping is the Advent, Advent of Purgatory Grace of Water. So the Grace of Water trial, it came out during this event on the JP server. It's either delayed on global or skipped entirely. 
I would assume delayed, but in any case, it's not here, which sucks. Other than that, you know, <clears throat> farm the event. Um, we've got a yet a new Lapis Replica exchange shop. This one for Esper of Hope. Um, so the only thing that's notable here is it looks like after months and months and months and months, they're finally updating the selection for the fragments. So I'm pretty sure Hayo was not in the selection before. It cut off at like Sarah and Evoker or whatever. Um, so I'm, I believe they're updating it with new units. So that's kind of nice to see. Um, you know, I personally don't need that, but there's a few others that I could use from those selections. You can choose uh, King of Bal Galoof, etc. So yeah, you know, nice that they're finally updating the replica shop. Also free weekly 10 pulls, you know, going on and on. Not much to say there. <coughs> uh, some miscellaneous updates as well. So more Esper training boards, Lakshmi and Leviathan. Leviathan gets overcap for Aqua Killer, and Lakshmi gets overcap for, I believe, Human Killer. Uh, and look at this. Look at this. They're actually taking, um, well, my suggestion. I'm not sure they did it because I said so, but... <laughs> <laughs> but something I've been asking for very frequently is to please give more categories to global units. It looks like they're actually doing it. So here's two new categories being added to global, Guardians and Elite Soldiers. Um, and as you can see, all of the examples are global units. There's a lot of JP units that are also in these categories, but they're showcasing a lot or exclusively global units, which is awesome. So, Elena, Rick, Sukiko, Wilk are going to be Guardians, and more. And then Elite Soldiers, we've got Hayo, uh, Veritas, Mirai, Olive, etc. So, that's, that's incredible. I'm so happy that they are finally giving global units some proper categories. Now, it would be wonderful, it'd be amazing, if they went back and filled in some of the other categories... Like, I know, like, Wilk and Rick are on The Gathering, and, like, Elena is on Blessing of the Crystals, but there's a lot of those categories that globals are completely ne neglected on. Like, I don't think there's a single global in the Rebellion category. I don't think there's a single global in the Royal category. Actually, that's not true. Um, Behemi and Chizuru are in the Royal category, but that's it. Like, we need some some more global units in those categories. So hopefully they'd go back and fill some of those in. Um, but anyway, anyway, I'm super glad to see this. Guardians and Elite Soldiers, outstanding. Um, and then we have uh, the monthly bulletin. So now we get to get sad again. Uh, it looks like they are cutting even more content because we've only got two weeks in April with events. So the first week of April... Then we're going to have a totally dead week. Then we've got the 18th, which is obviously Clash of Wills. Then we're going to have a dead week again. So we went from one dead week in March to two dead weeks in April. No event. So, yeah, that really unfortunate. They're just cutting more and more and more and more and more stuff. So there you go. <coughs> and the preview for Clash of Wills for April... Uh, first boss of the season, I assume it's going to be easy. Even the third boss of the season was a complete joke. Um, the one we just had is actually still open. And just as a little aside, I have seen people saying, please show me more Clash of Wills clears for the one that's currently open right now. And it's so forgettable, I don't even remember what the boss is. It's... Oh my god, it was, it was like, like a Medusa, wasn't it? No... Oh, it's the Hydra. The Hydra with, with the copied sprite. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't know. I'll probably go back to the Clash of Wills and, like, just clear it again. The issue I have with, like, just running the Clash of Wills over again is, like, because it's so easy and so just basic. And when I say easy, I don't mean, like, you know, easy to OTK or whatever. I just mean it's easy and, like, there's not really going to be any variety and me showing you more clears. They're all going to be the same, because the boss has an extremely basic AI. So every single party that I show in Clash of Wills, the current Clash of Wills, 
it's going to be basically the exact same thing. We're going to fill the morale gauge on turn one and turn two. On turn one, we're going to do water resist. We're going to do a mirage on turn one. On turns two, three, and four, we're going to either imbue the boss or use more mirage. Then we're going to like do the vertex mode on like turn five or turn six, and we're going to OTK it on like turn five, six, or seven. Every single team I show you is going to do the exact same thing with like no variety whatsoever. That's the reason I haven't really felt like just going and showing all the elements because they're all going to be the same thing. It's literally going to just be like, you know, 45 minutes of me gearing a party and, you know, swapping around killers and all that. And then I'm going to show you the exact same thing I did in the first clear. The same thing I did in the second clear. It's going to be the same clear. But people keep asking, so I'll go and do it again with another element. Whatever. I'll, prob I'll probably do it this weekend. Anyway... Going back on track to the current or the upcoming Clash of Wills on uh, on the 18th. Uh, we've got Beast, Human, Machina, Water, Light, and Lightning. So the good news is that people that pulled for Cyrus, at least he gets one more Clash of Wills. So there you go. He's not going to be totally dead. Um, light is kind of expected because uh, upcoming right after this whole Sophie stuff finishes it up, uh, we should be getting... Um, Yuna and all that, the whole Final Fantasy X stuff. <clears throat> also, uh, you know, War of the Visions was around then, but with Stern. So Light and all that should be upcoming a little bit later. Xenogears is around then as well. Uh, and then Lightning is kind of like from left field. Lightning, like, huh? But whatever. You know, it's probably a secondary weakness. We're not going to we're not going to do it anyway. And then, um, so that's basically the news. Uh, for the week. Not a whole lot going on. We've got a farming event, and the, like I said, they, they cut the actual challenging fight of the event, and then the trial is missing as well. So as far as fun content, we don't have any this week. We've just got the farming event, the auto-repeat farming. Uh, the trial and the EX boss are missing. <laughs> anyway, um, so let's talk about Sophie and some upcoming teams. So, should you pull for Sophie? I told you in the past, um, Rain was a huge skip because Sophie is coming very soon. Like I said, Sophie is here before we had any kind of content to even use Rain on. But should you pull for Sophie? So let's take a look at some example uh, parties you could build for Dark Visions. So we know that Dark Visions is closed until, I forgot the date, I think it's like May 18th or something, May 20th, I don't know. You know, this shows you in game. Somewhere late May, early, July, early June is when we're going to be getting like Dark Visions coming back yet again. So based on what we can predict from the schedule, based on what we have now, what are some parties... If you're going to like try hard in Dark Visions, what are some parties you might want to build? So the next Dark Visions based on the order, assuming we skipped the anniversary JP or the anniversary Dark Visions from JP, which is a, a safe assumption. The next one should be a beast. So a beast Dark Vision, I think it's like Dark Visions 39 or something in JP. I don't know. In any case, it should be a beast. Keep in mind, this may change. Global may swap it to whatever they want but based on predictions we're going to assume for the sake of discussion it's a beast dark visions uh, and we're going to assume some of the teams and units that should be available by late may early june so we've pretty much at this point got the entire water team available in the next few weeks we should be getting the final pieces to the light party and then mixed in through there, and then towards the end of May, we should be getting the rest of the Dark Party. And those are going to be the three like big parties for Dark Visions. Um, and then after that, there's going to be like Fire, and we'll talk more about Fire and all that, and going forward beyond that in a moment. But unless we like really fast forward through JP content... We're not going to get to the fire meta before the next Dark Visions. So, yeah. So your options are pretty much going to... And again, this is all based on predictions, based on assumptions. Um, you know, informed assumptions. 
But uh, you know, if Global decides to go completely other direction with nothing but Global exclusives for like seven banners in a row, and they build a whole like wind party or something, you know, it could happen. I'm I'd bet you money it doesn't, but it could. Any anyhow, we're gonna assume that they do what they've always done and just basically follow the JP order. So the water party would be, and of course there are alternatives and all that, but if you're going to be, in my opinion, some of the best of the best units for that water party, it would be Neovisions plus Laswell, Neovisions plus Zyrus. You're going to have Aang for your Amplify field and damage. Sophie will be your leader. She'll be your amplifier for Laswell and Zyrus. And um, your breaker will be either Metsy or Waka. Waka might be out by then, probably will in fact. So Waka's actually better than Metsy, although they're both, you know, well, Waka's actually okay. So yeah, if Waka is out, you want him over Metsy. But e both of them have the uh, 160 in peril, 40 field in peril field, and the 89 breaks. <clears throat> and then for this party, you would need a beast killer. So your options are pretty much Melissa for some 250 killers and 150 AoE. Or you could bring, like, Chow, who has some 150 single-target killers. Uh, and Chow can also, or someone on the party could use, like, the global exclusive single-target 250 beast killer. Something like that, you know. Anyway, that's, like, the basic water party. So the water party is probably, you know, I haven't mapped this out, but just, you know, ballparking. It's probably going to be the second best option at that point in time. Um, then there's the light party. So the light party is overall not that good unless Global makes some major changes to these units. <laughs> and there's a few issues here. So some of the big damage dealers for the light party would be like Stern, Neovisions plus Stern, Neovisions plus M Maria from the Xenogears collaboration. We're probably going to get that. We usually don't skip Xenogears. Um... Now, because we basically have skipped Nelica, and Nelica is just gone, that means the Light Party does not have a good field for Amplify. So your next best option is Mirai at 50%. Um, Nelica was the 70% Light Field who is currently missing, and before you jump on me in the comments, yes, it is possible she shows up randomly, you know, out of schedule in the future. If so, great. Swap Mirai for Nelica on this list. Uh, but at the current time, we're going to assume Nelica is a skip. Uh, the leader would be the new Yuna coming up later. Uh, and she's basically the same thing as Sophie, but with <coughs> a thousand leader skill, 100 AoE amp. But the difference is, um, I'm sorry, no, never mind, never mind, no, no, there's no difference. Uh, yeah, Yuna also has some small imperil fields, but uh, you, you're, you're going to want a real field instead, which for this team would be Prompto. Prompto would be your imperil field and your breaker, 89 breaks for the light party. And another kind of handicap of the light party is that Melissa is basically your only option for beast killer. There's really no good beast killers for the light party. Like the water party, you could bring Chow and the Global Vision card. And then the Dark Party, we're going to get to in a minute. But um, yeah, so the, the Light Party, if you go that direction, is a little bit second class because the field unit is missing. Mirai is not a great swap for that. Your killer is basically only Melissa. And then, yeah, you know, so overall, Light is viable, but not the best. And then there's Dark, which will probably be the best option by far um, during the next Dark Vision. So the Dark Party would be Faye, who is from Xenogears, the current Dark Fina. Um, and then because their killer is Lulu, who um, is also the Amplify Field. So Lulu is the Amplify Field. She also has 160 AoE Beast Killer, which allows you to drop Melissa for an entire new damage dealer. Which, depending if she's out, now this would be cutting it really close. So Neovisions plus Snavlenka might also be available at this Dark Visions. If so, then she's obviously on the party as well. If not, some of the alternatives are like Emeralda, that's an upcoming unit, 
or Cursebringer, Nelica, or Void Mage Roka for the Dark Party. And then the leader, like Yuna, like Sophie, is Jekt. Jekt is the Thousand Leader, the 100 AoE Amplify. And because we don't need to bring Melissa, our breaker is now going to be Elispirus, which also has a 90 break and on top of the same usual field. <laughs> so yeah, so the thing is, like these teams only have 89 breaks. The Dark Party has 90% break. The Dark Party has a Beast Killer on their DPS unit. The Dark Party has three dedicated DPS slots, and if Snavlenka is out by then, the Dark Party has three Neovisions Plus uh, damage dealers. So, yeah. That's kind of the reason a lot of people say that water is a huge trap, because by the time Dark Visions rolls around again, water is already power crept. And light is also a huge trap, because light just right out of the gate, is already worse than water. And again, it's worse than dark by the time um, the dark visions rolls around. Now, so the question becomes, should you pull for Sophie? If you already have Laswell, maybe you got him from a, um, a video summon, maybe you really love Laswell and you pulled for him. If you've already got Zyrus, maybe you went for him because of Clash of Wills, maybe you went for him for, you know, the Sprite or whatever. And you've already got Aang, you've already got, you know, Metsy, and you've already got Chow or Melissa. Should you pull for Sophie? Well, if she's the only one remaining for your party, why not, I guess? It's up to you. Also, keep in mind, later on, we're talking much later down the road, there are a few other additions to the Water Party. So the Water Party does become good, once again, in the distant future. The new Neovisions Plus Cloud that everyone's hyped about, <coughs> he also covers water. The new Tifa covers water. There's also a collaboration unit, uh, Sea King Caesarian. I'm probably saying that wrong. He's a water Neovisions Plus unit. So water gets a bunch of additions much, much further down the road, way past the Dark Visions we're talking about. So the water you know, party might still be relevant long term. The light party is pretty much dead. Uh, there, there's no good light units coming up later, and these aren't even that good in the first place. It's a, it's a massive trap. Uh, and then the Dark Party is, for the most part, other than Nelica, not getting a whole lot of new updates long term. But the big thing here is, should you pull for any of this? Now, if you're willing to just basically not worry about your rank for one single Dark Visions... If you just like, you know, the, the next Dark Visions, if you just write it off and say, I'm not worried about it, I'll just use old units, I'll get like a rank 620 clear, and I'll be fine. Then you can skip all of this, and you can go fire. Now, the fire party is going to be way better than all of this, because the fire party gets overdrive. The fire party also gets a lot better units, a lot better strength a more cohesive team, and all that. So that's my personal plan at the current time, is I'm skipping all three of these elements. I'm skipping water, I'm skipping light, I'm skipping dark, and I'm going to wait for fire. And then fire is where I will probably try to start building up my Dark Visions party again. So next Dark Visions in like early June, I'm going to be low ranked. I'm going to be like rank 600, which is not even that low. And I'm fine with that. No big deal. Then the next Dark Visions, we should have the whole fire party starting to roll in. And that's what I'll go for. I'll go for the overdrive stuff. And that, 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 that's going to creep all three of these parties. So, yeah. There is some, you know, insight, in my opinion, about the upcoming elemental parties for Neo Visions Plus. So, if you want to go water, get Sophie. If, for whatever reason, you want to go light, you're making a mistake. If you really want to go dark, it's a very strong team. It's probably going to be the best team on the next Dark Visions. Um, and yeah, most of those units are still about a month and a half away. And if you want to, um, you know, skip all this, you can go for fire. Which is my plan, most likely. Unless something changes before then. In which case, I'll let you know. Anyway, that was a little bit of a 
tangent for a news video, but not much else to talk about. Okay, see you next time.